my class, Mr. Tracy Harris. We're doing a lesson on irony today. So to start off the lesson, I have this quote. It reads, at this time, at a time like this, scorching irony, not convincing argument is needed. That quote was by Frederick Douglass. And um, this was during the time when he was trying to abolish slavery, where he no longer wanted to argue about it, but he wanted the outcome to come out differently than what people expected by abolishing slavery. So what is irony? Anybody knows? Okay, I'll tell you. Irony is a contrast between what is expected and what actually happens. And there's three types of irony. Situational irony, verbal irony, and dramatic irony. So what is situational irony? Situational irony is something that happens we wouldn't expect to happen. For example, a fire station burning down, that would be an example of situational irony. A police station getting robbed, that would be another example of, of irony, situational irony. A pilot has a fear of heights, that's definitely situational irony. Because you wouldn't expect a pilot to have a fear of heights. Verbal irony, what is said is different than what is meant. For example, Looking at her daughter's messy room, mom states, wow, I love how you clean your room. That's an example of verbal irony. Whoop, no, she's off. On my way to grandmother's house, my dad's car has got a flat tire, and he exclaimed, fantastic, this day couldn't get any better. That's the situation, that's a verbal irony. Dramatic irony, the reader knows something that the characters in the story do not know. For example, in a horror movie, the audience knows the monster is hiding in the closet, but the character in the movie does not know that. Or the audience knows that the main character set up traps all over the house, but the burglars in the house, they do not know that. So that's pretty much it for... Um, Irony, the three different types, situational irony, verbal irony, and dramatic irony. So we're going to get into the story and see if we can try to find the irony in the story. This story was written by Kate Choplin. And um, she's a famous writer back in the 1950s. And she wrote this story. The Story of an Hour by Kate Choplin. She was a forgotten American voice until her literary reputation was resurrected by critics in the 1950s. Today, her novel, The Awakening, was written in 1899, the story of a sensual, determined woman who insists on her independence. It's widely read and highly honored. So let's group read the story. I'll start out. Knowing that Miss Myler was afflicted with heart trouble, great care was taken to break to her as gently as possible the news of her husband's death. It was her sister Josephine who told her in broken sentences, veiled hints that revealed and half concealed. Her husband Richard was there to hear her. It was he who had been in the newspaper office when intelligence of the railroad disaster was received, with Brentley Mallard's name leading the list of killed. He had only taken the time to assure himself of its truth by the name leading the list of killed. The second telegram had hastened to forestall any less careful, less tender friends in bearing the said message. She did not hear the story as many women have heard the same, with a paralyzing ability to accept its significance. She swept at once with, student, with sudden wild abandonment in her sister's arms. When she stormed off grief and had spent itself, she went away to her room alone, 
she would have no one to follow her. There stood facing the open window, a comfortable room armchair. Into this she sank, pressed down by a physical exhaustion that haunted her body and seemed to reach her soul. She could see in the open square before her house that the tops of the trees that were all a quiver with the new spring light. The delicious breath of rain was in the air. In the street below, the peddler was crying his wares. The notes of distant song, which some one was singing, reaching her faintly, and countlessly sparrows were twittering in the caves. Okay, who else would like to take the reading up from here? Uh, can I read? Yes, go ahead, sir. Where do I start? There were patches of blue sky showing here and there through the clouds that had met and piled one above the other in the west facing her window. She sat with her head thrown back upon the cushion of the chair, quite motionless, except when a sob came up into her throat and shook her, as a child who has cried itself to sleep continues to sob in its dreams. She was young with a fair, calm face whose lines bespoke repression and even a certain strength, but now there was a dull stare in her eyes whose gaze was fixed away off yonder on one of those patches of blue sky. It was not a glance of reflection, but rather indicated a suspension of intelligent thought. There was something there was something coming to her and she was waiting for it fearfully. What is it? She did not know. It was too subtle and elusive to name, but she felt it creeping out of the sky, reaching toward her through the sounds, the scents, the color that filled the air. Now her bosom rose and fell tumultuously. She was beginning to recognize this thing that was approaching to possess her. She was striving to beat it back with her will as powerless as her two white slender hands would have been. When she abandoned herself, a little whispered word escaped her slightly parted lips. She said it over and over under her breath, free, free, free. The vacant stare and the look of terror that had followed it went from her eyes. They stayed keen and bright. Her pulses beat fast, and the coursing blood warmed and relaxed every inch of her body. Thank you, sir. So basically, what's happening in the story now, apparently the character in the story's husband was just killed by a train accident, and this is her like going through the grieving process. Of course, she's sad, and she's reflecting on some thoughts of times they shared together in the past. Like it says, now her bosoms rose and fell tumultuously, and she was beginning to recognize that this thing was approaching to possess her as she was striving to beat it back with her will as powerless as her two white slender hands would have been. It's just all a part of the grieving process. So I'll take over the reading from now. She knew that she would weep again when she saw the kind, tender hands hold it in death. The face that had never looked save with love upon her, fixed and gray and dead. But she saw beyond the bitter moment, the long procession of years to come that would belong to her absolutely. And she opened and spread her arms out to them in welcome. And yet, she loved him sometimes, often she had not. What did it matter? What could love the unsolved mystery count for in the face of possession and self-assertion, which she suddenly recognized as the strongest impulse of her being. Free, body and soul free, she kept whispering. Josephine was kneeling before the closed door with her lips in the keyhole imploring for admission. Lois, open the door, I beg, open the door. You will make yourself ill. What are you doing, Lois? For heaven's sake, open the door. Her fancy was running riot along those days ahead of her. Spring days and summer days, all sorts of days that would be her own. She breathed a quick prayer that life might be long as it was only yesterday she had thought with a shoulder, a shudder that life might be long. Someone was opening the front door with the latch key. It was Brentley Mallet who entered. A little traveled stain composedly carried his Grip sack with an umbrella. He had been far from the scene of the accident and did not even know there had been one. 
He stood amazed as Josephine Pearson's cry and Richard's quick motion to screen him from the view of life. But Richard was too late. When the doors came, they said that she had died from a heart disease, a joy that kills. Okay, so in a minute, we're going to break up into groups and work on this worksheet on irony. And then we'll have a discussion about irony afterwards. But based on the story that I just read, what type of irony do you think this is? Situational irony, something happened that we wouldn't expect to happen. Verbal irony, something said is different than what is meant. Or dramatic irony, the reader knows something that the characters do not. Um, situational irony? Exactly, situational irony. That's exactly right. So now you guys are gonna just break up into groups work on his worksheet into groups, and then we'll come back together at the end and um, discuss today's lessons. So go ahead and break up the